The night enveloping Hellbrook High School, teenagers break in, seeking adventure. Their jokes and laughter echo through the empty corridors, creating a contrast with the impending horror. They explore abandoned classrooms, reveling in their freedom and the thrill of the forbidden. But their carefreeness quickly turns to fear when a mysterious figure appears in the corridor emptiness. The game turns into a nightmare as they realize they are not alone. The attacker, concealing his face, starts chasing them, turning the school corridors into a labyrinth of fear. Panicked, the teenagers try to run, but their relentless pursuer is unyielding. They split up, trying to find an exit, but the attacker catches up with them one by one. The sounds of their struggle and desperate screams disrupt the silence of the night school. Each of them faces the attacker, but the struggle is futile. Erica Yang, an ambitious senior and student council president, films a motivational video for her peers. She inspiringly talks about the importance of using the last days of school for meaningful risks and new beginnings, all while hiding her struggle to get into Harvard. Meanwhile, Erica prepares for an unexpected Saturday detention at school, carefully hiding this fact from her ex-boyfriend, Jason. In the school library, she meets other students, Lizzie, Russ, Vic, and Brett. She evades conversations about the reasons for her detention, arousing their surprise and curiosity. After the deputy director, who assigns them to clean the library, leaves, the atmosphere among the teenagers relaxes. They start smoking marijuana, except for Brett, and discuss the grim legend of a deceased teacher's ghost, supposedly haunting disobedient students. As the day and Saturday detention continues, the tension gradually decreases, the teenagers begin to feel freer and relaxed and enjoy time away from the usual school routine. They take a break to smoke marijuana, except for Brett, who stays away from this activity. In this setting, candid conversations begin, during which the teenagers discuss school gossip and move on to the topic of a local urban legend. The legend tells of the ghost of a deceased teacher, who supposedly roams the school and punishes disobedient students. This story provokes mixed reactions among the teenagers, from skepticism to concern. Some of them mock the legend, while others seem more intrigued and frightened. The discussion of the legend adds an element of mystique and a harbinger of impending events to the episode. The teenagers, immersed in their conversations and jokes, are unaware that they will soon face something much more real and threatening than just school stories. As the day and Saturday detention continues, strange and disturbing events begin to occur. One by one, the teenagers start disappearing under unexplained circumstances. At first, their disappearance seems random. Perhaps someone decided to escape from detention. But as the number of missing students increases, those left behind begin to understand that something more sinister is happening. The tension escalates when Erica discovers that her ex-boyfriend Jason who secretly sneaked into the school to talk to her, was also killed. This discovery makes them realize that there is a real killer in the school. Fear and paranoia begin to engulf the group as they try to understand who or what is hunting them. The remaining students now fully realize that they are in danger. They begin looking for possible escape routes and ways to contact the outside world, but find that all exits are locked and there is no connection to the outside world. Their initial fear turns to despair, as they realize they are trapped with an unknown killer. The group tries to stay united, but panic and suspicions begin to erode their unity. They discuss who might be behind these murders, and suggest that it could be one of them or something supernatural, related to the legend of the teacher's ghost. Erica tries to stay strong and lead, but her authority is undermined by the heightened fears and suspicions of the others. The group decides to explore the school in search of answers or a way out, but their movements become increasingly chaotic and panicky. A critical moment follows Erica's final confrontation with the killer. Erica, now the last survivor, finds herself trapped. She loses consciousness from a blow inflicted by an unknown assailant and comes to finding herself tied up and held in the school's basement. In this dark and ominous setting, Erica comes face to face with the killer. She realizes that her captor is Brett, one of the students detained with her. 
he reveals his true identity. He is the son of the deceased teacher about whom the legend was told and has been living in the school's basement all this time. Brett explains his motives. He believes that the murders are necessary to maintain order and discipline in the school, striving to continue his mother's legacy. Erica tries to find a way to escape, using her ability to manipulate and psychologically influence Brett, who seems obsessed with her. Erica, the only survivor and captive of Brett in the basement, begins to act. She uses Brett's feelings for her to convince him to untie her, offering a dance as a distraction. As soon as Erica is freed, she immediately counterattacks. She suddenly and decisively assaults Brett, using all her strength and cunning to protect herself. In the midst of this tense fight, filled with emotional and physical strain, Erica turns the situation to her advantage and kills Brett. This moment reveals a new side of Erica, showing her as a character ready to go to extreme lengths for survival and to achieve her goals. The scene emphasizes her determination and ability to act in extreme situations, simultaneously shattering her public image as an exemplary student. Having survived the nightmare in the school and overcome Brett, Erica emerges from the building. She is met by police officers who have arrived at the scene. In a state of shock and overwhelmed with emotions after the horror she experienced, she appears before them as the sole survivor. She uses her survival story and the tragic events at the school as a means to promote herself in the eyes of the public and the media.